at 6 p.m. And uh, I'm going to step away from our normal protocols for a moment and even out of my comfort zone and uh, ask that you uh, join me in prayer to acknowledge the tragic events that occurred in Nashville yesterday. Father, I lift up the, those people who were deceased yesterday. I just pray that you comfort their souls. Father, also lift up all of those who are hurting, who survived, all those who are hurting, who participated, the, the, the kids, the parents, the administrators, the first responders. Um, I just lift them all up in prayer. I pray for comfort and healing. And I pray for sane and significant response on behalf of decision makers to combat this problem. Uh, all this I ask in the name of our Father. Amen. Thank you for that departure. And we will now move on with approval of our minutes. And I think Vice Chair Wilson will do that and has a friend to recognize as well. Thank you, Chairman. I have reviewed the minutes from our February meeting. I find them to be in order, and without objection, I move for their approval. A second. And a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Be opposed. And also, Chairman, I wanted to take just a second and say hello to Ms. Fran Dunn back here, who is with the Senior Activities Center of Smyrna, the executive director of that, and also with Leadership Rutherford. Just want to thank her for being here tonight. Hello, Ms. Nunn. Welcome. And we will proceed with, oh, let's, uh, let's do a roll call. Rachel? Commissioner Oliver? Present. Commissioner Davidson? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Commissioner Boyd? Here. Mr. McMurray? Here. Mr. Gooch? Here. Chairman Dodd? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. And we will have the Health Department report. Director Crumby, please. Good evening. Your health department continues to do good work for the people of Rutherford County, and we are proud to serve. You should have your February report before you, I hope. In keeping with our mission to protect, promote, and improve the health and prosperity of the people of Tennessee, February's report does reflect that we are off to a strong start to the year, and the numbers indicate that things are progressing exactly as they should. We've been making great progress working with our Community Health Council, finalizing our Community Health Improvement Plan, which is a strategy for addressing the needs of our community as outlined in our Community Health Needs Assessment. Very proud of the work that we're doing with our community partner organizations. Some updates for you, um, COVID-19, the CDC continues to rate our community level as low. We still do offer free rapid testing available Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. Vaccines and boosters are free, available 8 to 10 or 1 to 3 Monday through Friday without appointment to anyone six months or older. The federal government has announced that May 11th will officially end the COVID-19 public health emergency declaration. This is not an official end to the pandemic, but an end to the emergency response phase. And many of the policy allowances that were included in the National Emergency Declaration and the Public Health Emergency Declaration. While the particulars remain to be seen, a subsequent announcement has indicated that there will be a gradual step down in certain areas to avoid the consequences of a sudden stop to some services. So as far as your health department is concerned, we will continue to offer free testing and vaccines to the public. Any changes that would come our way, we will be giving um, well advanced notice on and will relate to this body accordingly. While flu season does peak in the winter, flu season uh, can last as late as May and we do still have shots free and available during our walk-in hours from eight to 10, one to three, Monday through Friday to anyone six months of age or older while supplies last. 
We'd like to point out that next week, April 3rd through 7th, is National Public Health Week, and we'd like to acknowledge our good folks that work in public health, but they would be the first to say thanks, but keep the focus on the mission and on the importance of a strong public health care system. Just a brief statement of support for everyone. We recognize the news out of Nashville yesterday weighs heavily on the minds and on the hearts of the people who serve in this committee. Your health department wants to extend its support to you and any of your constituents who are affected at this time. We have many referral numbers we can give and resources to offer. If any of our public does ask you for help, you can point them in our direction. We'd be glad to help. And on an unrelated note, we were informed of Director Sullivan's absence and would like to extend our best wishes to him, to his father, and his family. This does conclude our report. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Director. Any questions for Mr. Crumbie? I have a quick question. Um, when, what's the date for the National Public Health Week? What did you say? Um, the dates are April 3rd through 7th. Thank you. Yes, sir. There's no other questions. I'll entertain a motion to approve the report. So, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Director. Next, we have, can y'all hear me okay out there? I don't. Next, we have uh, community care, and I regret to inform you that the board treasurer was called away on a work-related item for his day job and cannot be present tonight, and that was the bulk of our presentation on community care tonight. But I do have some pieces of information that pertain to some questions we've had and an and, and offer. So in, in no particular order, um, the CCRC, does not receive any tax funds for their operation, for the grounds, for anything in the interior of the building. The only funds they receive are for maintenance of the roof, exterior walls, and foundations. Currently, they're undergoing a remodel and the county loaned CCRC between five and $600,000 to rebuild, I believe, wing F. And we did that, the previous administration did that because they heard CCRC was going to the bond market or the, the institutional market and paying pretty high interest. The county elected to offer to loan the money. It came to my attention that that money will be paid back in April. So we are looking for a check from CCRC in the tune of $600,000 next month. Now we have paid for the, a roof refurbishing out there. We discussed in property management, uh, liquid membrane roof, the GC met with the CCRC board this month and are gonna proceed with that. We will pay for that roof. That's part of our contract. Um, some other components I've discovered Rutherford County is not in the nursing home business. Um, I thought we were. Rutherford County owns a building and 26 acres on County Farm Road. Historically, that has been the nursing home, for lack of a better term. The CCRC board is in the nursing home business. They operate under a Tennessee, a state of Tennessee, Secretary of State charter that's in, in your packet tonight. They're an independent function, LLC, incorporated body. They're in the nursing home business. We cannot interfere with their business. We cannot remove or increase what that charter gives them the power to do. But we, that's one document that controls this. They're a legal body. Number two, in that charter, we appoint the board. So to the extent that we control perhaps the attitude of the board, as it were, we do have control in that regard, but that's our only involvement. And the chairman of that board is perpetually the mayor of Rutherford County. 
So CCRC is a board separate from the county. Number two, they are in a lease agreement with Rutherford County on a building and 26 acres. That lease agreement controls a great deal of information. It's in your packets as well. The lease agreement concludes in 2026. At that time, we could do whatever we choose, might choose to do in our relationship with CCRC. We could not renew the lease, we could tighten the lease, we could charge rent. That stuff will come up in the next couple years. The third component of this relationship is CCRC, who's chartered by Tennessee and in the nursing home business, has a management agreement with United Church Homes to manage the facility. They don't receive money from the county. They receive a percentage of the revenue generated by the patients, Medicare, Medicaid, private dollars, whatever. They don't work for us, they work for the CCRC board. Their contract renews, as the mayor said last month, in 2023, to January of 23. And so there'll be an opportunity there for the commu community care board to negotiate and renew that contract. So, uh, oh, and Michael has a contribution. I want to clarify a number you read. We loaned about 1.3 million to CCRC with half being reimbursed by CCRC and the other half being reimbursed by the Christie Houston Foundation. The Christie Houston Foundation did not give us that 600 and something thousand dollar portion up front. They gave it to us over three payments uh, of which we just received the last one this month. Thank so you. We did front both. I just, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and then we have received as of this month the, the final Christy Houston payment and then we'll await uh, what Chairman Dodd is referring to as the CCRC portion hopefully next month. Thanks for that clarity. See, uh, Christy Houston paid for half of the remodel including half of the interior part that, that's not our responsibility. Do you remember what the whole remodel budget was? Well, about 1.5, 1.3 million was the original. Um, one of the issues that was had over there was, I think there was a contractor that was excused and another one hired. Um, so we're still working on the final dollar amount pending the outcome of the contractor that was let go, pending on what that outcome is. Yeah, very good, thank you. And a lot of this stuff dropped into my inbox this afternoon, so forgive me for spending your time going over some of the notes. I will add another uh, component. Um, we do not receive any income from the nursing home, CCRC. But the treasurer did drop a note in my inbox that we receive in-kind benefits, for instance, nonviolent inmates of the Rutherford County penal system will can receive rehabilitation at cost at that facility, for instance, uh, and other employees that can receive rehabilitation is has been just a cost reduction, if not an actual income. So there's items like that that I had failed to think about previously. And I'll conclude with, again, look, your, your inbox, your SharePoint has some legal information from Evan Cope and the lease agreement and the management agreement. So be sure to look at those. Now, I'll conclude with this on, on CCRC. Historically, I've learned that the Health and Ed Committee would meet at the CCRC committee room one meeting out of the year, and we've been invited to come in April. Our next meeting would be held at CCRC, if you guys choose to. It would be 6 p.m., same meeting, whatever the, our date is, same date. We would just travel out there. We, they've even asked if we want to come early, they'll have supper. That's up to this body. We can, regardless, we can come early, those who can. 
We can tour the daycare. We can tour components of the building that are appropriate for uh, lay people to, to tour. So if that's of interest to y'all, we could take a vote on that now. And, let's, and that, I think that board will agree. They've, they've given the invitation, uh, but I think all the board would have to agree. What, <clears throat> what time do they serve supper? I think we would have some uh, impact on that. So what time do you want to eat? Just whenever they serve. And All right. <laughs> it's up your league. Do you agree, Commissioner? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm getting some clarity here. It may not be meat and taters. It may be finger food. So That's which, fine. Which you'll, which you'll <laughs> Just I appreciate up. anything. So it may not be meatloaf and mashed potatoes, but it might be chicken tenders. And Mr. Chairman, considering that four of us are also on property management in which we would need to usually tour properties and stuff, I think this would be a great idea to do in April if everybody is available. So I would like to entertain a motion to that and get in the minutes that we'll move out there. At the same time, same date. I'm sorry, I say same time. I think the tour would have to take place before the meeting. So that's the only part we can't lock in right now. Because I think, can you, I know it's hard for you to get in from Laverne, you guys, sometimes. So let's make Nick sure. Nick, can leave could, early. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll move <laughs> that the chairman make arrangements for a tour and meeting and finger food at community care next month. <laughs> I second that motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm sorry. All, all opposed. I should have opened it up for discussion. My only concern, <laughs> my only concern is that our agendas are heavy and we've got a lot of budgetary items coming up. So I get I, I will make this play. Can you go with us? Are you okay with yes, that? Well, I'm sorry, Rachel. Excuse me. Normally we went in December and it was only just the like the bare bones agenda because school board was yeah. not there. Yeah. Um, the health department didn't come out there. It was just okay. the committee meeting and we still had documents possibly to go over, but it was not like a regular meeting. It was always in December okay. when we went. Well, hence my, we should have had discussion before the vote, but my concern, that just highlights my concern. There's good, we, we're on property management as well. We want to see the building. They've been a topic that we keep having to kind of push have an authoritative people answer. We would have the whole board there. We would have the administrator of the United Church Home there. So we could get a lot of good about CCRC, but would it be difficult to attack the budgets and, and the heavier items that we have at Health and Ed? I know we've got committee members who are really distressed about the, the status of Laverne High School from the status of the building to the status of empty classrooms. Do we want to can we have a hearty debate on other items at that committee room? I have a question. So would it be possible to just do a, if we can all meet the week before, just if you come up with some dates and time, does it have to be um, some, instead of having a meeting, official meeting, just tour it and have dinner? Uh, is that an option? And then my second question is, if we did meet there, um, will it be televised, like recorded? That's my only thing, because I, I, I don't want the public yeah, to say again, we, great had, we had a meeting and, and it wasn't televised or recorded. <laughs> I missed that. Dub it. Oh, their workshops or whatever. Um, Mr. Chairman, if yes, I, sir. Uh, if I remember correctly, when the school board presents their budget to health and ed it's generally at a combined meeting with budget correct is that been scheduled it's may Mark? yes I, I think rachel had it right the 23rd may 23rd is, at the school board no nope, i'm sorry it's here this time it, it is here uh, next month, the 23rd? In May 23rd. May 3rd. So our next meeting would not be hearing the school board budget or no. any. No. So, so we wouldn't have a heavy agenda. W wouldn't have it, but I know that we, in our other business tonight, we may be inviting the school board to have 
their director of curriculum join us. We, we've got some, we want to drill down into some school board topics, and so it may become I, I, you know, I mean, heavy. If, if, since it's not a budget presentation, even though if the agenda is going to be a little heavy, I don't think that would affect us having it down there, in my opinion. Do you all agree? Could we be... We won't have our electronics, and I'm concerned about the video, too. Um, nobody from IT. We'll find out. Um, I want to resolve this tonight. I don't want to leave this hanging. So we, we'll have an opportunity tonight, perhaps, Eric, if we could talk to IT, maybe see if there had any way to have a remote broadcast. Um, agendas. Uh, Rachel reminded us that the SharePoints won't be available. I don't see why not. We have the, the tablets may not be available. We, we don't want the IT to have to send their whole crew out there and set up tablets. Um, I know my, I get my, everything on my laptop, on my phone. Um, so I don't want to keep creating obstacles while we can't go, but I don't want to ignore some of Rachel's good points. I still agree with you, Trey, but so let's see. We'll hear from IT and come back to this momentarily. I think we can do the heavy lifting if it's not the big budget. So we in agreement. We're, we're, it was a it was a positive vote. Uh, Chairman Phillips, any comments? Just one. This spring is going to be a, a trying time for all of us as it relates to making decisions that uh, affect the county from a financial perspective. Um, July, as an example, is a really light month. Uh, for the commission as a whole uh, and July might be the better time to go out there seeing as how uh, we've adopted uh, a new budget and set a new property tax rate uh, and a lot of folks take July off so July may be a, a better option for us than than April any comments question yes ma'am didn't you say this was an invitation from their board? So this date works for their board, right? Yes. Okay. The, 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 the treasurer of their board suggested it. He dropped me an email. I noticed it had their board on the email. So okay. some of them may have some conflicts, frankly. It, it was not a unanimous. I did not see unanimous name of list of folks on their invitation. I don't think it would be disruptive to them if we move it to another month. How's that? I'm a little uncomfortable having it next month, Jerry. I'm sorry. As soon as I called for the vote, I realized. So I'm letting my agenda get away from me here, and I don't like it. So as your chairman, I, I think we need to reconsider that, that vote we just took. Trey, any thoughts? Well, the, the comment on the, the month of July, um, a lot of committees, since there's not a lot of business, cancel their meetings in July. Uh, do you know if we canceled our meeting last year in July? Okay. But since you have second thoughts, I will uh, make a motion to rescind the previous motion. Second. Any discussion on that? And, and I will pursue a July meeting though. I just hate to push off. We've had some questions from committee members that were delaying. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll have CCRC on our, yes, sir. They can make it happen that they can have the film crew out there for next month's meeting. Okay. Thank you. And, and we may entertain that on another month. But um, so here, here's, here's some thoughts, Commissioner Oliver. Let's still get, try to get their treasurer up here next month and help nail down a couple of loose ends, make sure they're not budgetary items that would benefit us from talking to them. 
and then do our tour later. That seems way less complicated to me. Chairman Phillips, does that sound good to you? I'll go anytime. I love that place. I'm eager to see it. I'm eager for us to see it as, as a body. So as of now, we're going to leave our agenda here. and. <laughs> Trey, you're invited to the next board, CCR board meeting for lunch. So, so sorry that we digressed into that. I'm, I'm going to grab back our agenda. We, so we're, we're voting on rescinding the motion to have our April meeting there. All those in favor say aye. All opposed. All right, thank you for that. It, it's incumbent upon me to have, have somebody here next month to talk about their, 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 their treasurer, hopefully and that we'll entertain going out there on a meeting in the near future. Michael, uh, Director Smith, we left you on the agenda if you've got any reports. <coughs> For the special projects report, I, I don't really have Excuse any. Me. I apologize. No, please, um, please. Do we even have a motion to accept what you presented for the CCRC report? We, we did. I know we and talked about Eden and going next month, but we didn't ask any questions about what you presented. And I did have a question. Yeah, so. by all means, please do. And I don't, it was informational, so we won't do a motion, but any, any other, any questions on it, please proceed. I had a question because you made a note um, that they have an independent board, but that our mayor is chair of that board. So does that fall under his mayoral duties or is this something he's doing separate because if they're independent of the county or you know how does that work where he is automatically the bo the uh, chair if they're independent the the uh, all i know is the charter that's recorded with the state of tennessee one of the provisions in that charter ha is has the is the bylaws and one of the bylaws is a committee will be selected by the county commission the board will be selected by the commission and it says the county executive will be the chairman which is now the mayor so all i know is it's a provision in the bylaws i didn't check into its history or what criteria compelled the county commission at that time to make that decision but their bylaws dictate that we appoint the board and it's under the mayoral duties would unless that so unless those that, bylaws are changed by how, that board how is that independent of the county if the commission is selecting the board and the mayor is the chair i guess i'm just not understanding that yeah part. I, I think the independence is that the incorporated the board under the incorporation by the state of tennessee does not need our permission they don't run their budgets through us. We don't have dominion over their their daily activity or, or their financial decisions. Or uh, if, if to me that is a separation. I understand that. I'm just trying to understand why are they reporting to us? Why is this if they're independent? I guess I'm just the relationship. I'm still cloudy about. I guess. Uh, yes, please. So, <clears throat> so. They, what makes them independent is the operation is independent of us because we've signed a lease agreement with a third party company. Now, if that lease agreement came up, that board can make a recommendation back to here that we would take over to get back in the nursing home business. And then that would potentially trigger some financial obligation. It could potentially trigger that. Um, however, that board and this commission has decided to let a third party company run that nursing home. Therefore, they, as part of that lease agreement, run all the of their expenses through their books. So that part is the independent portion, not the board. And the the attorneys for the board, one's on spring break, the other one is at, has a standing Laverne, they're, they're also the attorneys for Laverne. They had a standing Laverne meeting tonight. So those guys couldn't come. And, and, and I'm unqualified to, to give you a better answer. So all the more reason I, I, it would it would be a good it will be a good meeting when we can meet with their board and, and become educated. Uh, and all my information, again, was informational only, uh, just just to uh, inform you guys, and I don't think we need to motion that. As having said that, Michael, we were, uh, any other questions about CCRC? Go, Mike. 
on your iPads tonight is the updated special projects report at the end of February. I do know we're close to the March. We do this on a monthly basis. There is really no update to that report other than current expenditures through February 28th. Um, I'll take any questions, but like I said, we haven't really had any changes to that report other than our current bills we've paid through the month of February, and then we'll complete a new report next week after the end of the month. Question. Is there any news report, what have you, regarding the light pole that fell at Smyrna damaging those cars adjacent to that stadium? I think once the once the school school board gets up here, I think that question will be better directed to uh, Trey Lee. Yeah, Trey put you on the hot the seat, but I think they'll be up here in a second to answer those. I just keep in mind I just keep the books for this, as far as the operations of the school system itself. We my office is not involved on the decisions of the day to day operations. We just keep the books, keep the numbers, uh, that sort of thing. Thank you. And again, that was informational and uh, consult your, your iPads. And Commissioner Oliver, that does bring us to the Board of Education, so we'll be able to, to, to dig into some of that. Um, gentlemen, I see we have Mr. Trey Lee and Mr. Brian Runyon, forgive me, uh, Director of Finance for Education. And what we have, uh, uh, budget amendments, a Board of Education update, and uh, in, uh, uh, let me jump ahead. Enrollment is 51,000 uh, to round it up a few hundred. So we're not gonna do any more on enrollment tonight unless y'all have questions. Go ahead, Director. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, we've got a couple of different items. One's an amendment and the other one is more of a substantial um, motion for our five-year capital projects. Um, but the first uh, amendment that I'm, I'm presenting is out of the fund, 177 capital projects. And this amendment budgets $150,000 from the 34685 committed for capital projects fund balance to educational capital projects account number 99100-355 maintenance and repair service to buildings to replace the fire alarm system at Rocky Fork Middle School. This project is being pulled from fund balance because it is a new project and an emergency replacement due to the system being struck by lightning. The recommended motion is to amend 150,000 from 34685 committed for capital projects fund balance to educational capital projects 99100 355 or 335 maintenance repair and service buildings to replace fire alarm system at Rocky Fork Middle School. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve as presented. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Question. On that item. Wasn't this brought before us before? Didn't we already vote on this? Or am I just remembering what I heard at the school board meeting? I, I don't think we've <laughs> brought up at the last school board so meeting. School board meeting. Okay, because I was yeah. like, I thought we already did this. Okay, great. One quick question too. Insurance, insurance pay any of this? Uh, we're self-insured up to 250,000. This is a $150,000 expenditure. That's a long answer for no. Thank you. So we've had a, a motion and a second, and any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Davidson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Boyd? Yes. Mr. McMurray? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Aye. Chairman Dodd? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, the second item that we have is the five-year building program high school addition request. Um, I am gonna read this request and give you the total request amounts and uh, read the motion and then Trey will be glad to answer any technical uh, uh, questions you have or anything in more detail about this. Uh, the Board of Education recently approved the bids for Smyrna High School, Oakland High School, and Riverdale High School additions. Total amount for each project is listed below in the chart and the total cost for all projects is $156,305,200. The Smyrna High um, 
project is a total overall amount of $38,420,000. Uh, the Oakland project is $61,580,000, and the Riverdale project is $56,305,200. The suggested motion is to approve the funding of $156,305,200 for the three listed high school additions. We have heard the motion. Any discussion? Excuse me. We, this is not a formal motion been made from this body. We can entertain a motion, then discussion, or we can proceed with any questions that y'all may have. I'd rather proceed with questions because my challenge is, is I'd like to see what this money is going to be spent on, designs, et cetera. I have not seen any of that. So I'm just kind of curious, and I've kind of asked that question before. The designs hit the SharePoint last week. I don't know how that information gets out. Uh, the designs are on the share, our SharePoint. Okay, well, I need some time to look ago. at it then because yeah. I was unaware because I've been asking that in previous, so I didn't know that they were on the SharePoint. Trey, do you have, can you address, I don't know if we can build on that or, or if, if Commissioner Oliver would, uh, it's, it's, Perhaps a brief description might help, uh, or if, if Commissioner Oliver can can get a set of plans or set up a meeting to come see you out at your place. And they are humongous too, Commissioner. There's 400 and some odd pages for the drawings. Have all of my colleagues seen the designs and know what we're voting on? I, I, I'll be glad to give a brief description to, just to kind of give an overview. I don't want to get too deep. Basically what all three projects are, were, the board's wishes for the three projects were to provide enough classrooms to bring the capacities of all three schools up to 2,500 students. With that, we currently have various uh, numbers of portables at each of these three campuses. These Portables will be removed. The students that are currently in those portables will then be relocated into the new addition. And any additional classroom space that is needed to supplant to get to 2,500 students per school. Roughly, it's about 25 to 30 classrooms at each school. They range from regular ed classrooms to science classrooms to CTE classrooms. That number is based on the need at each individual school. We met with all three of the principals, listened to the things that they requested, the things that they needed for their schools, uh, and those items were provided inside this design. At Oakland or Riverdale, it will provide a uh, extension that will tie the annex building to the main campus. It will also provide a new auditorium. The existing auditorium will be remodeled into three art classrooms. There will be some fairly major renovation of the cafeteria space for CTE for their school store, uh, some things of that nature. Uh, it will also be providing them with a culinary arts program that is currently very limited. It will make them on par with the other high schools in our county. Riverdale is very similar um, those the projects, I call them sister schools, they have been since 72, and they're kind of continuing that tradition with these two additions. There are some minor subtleties. There's a couple of science programs that are offered at Oakland that were not requested at Riverdale, but Riverdale asked for a, a, a couple of other type programs. Smyrna High is similar. Uh, uh, in purpose, it's to bring the campus to 2,500 students. Uh, there is, there's still a, a number of science classrooms. That's a need at all the schools. Uh, regular ed classrooms, there's some additional CTE programs that were requested for that school that are part of uh, the project at Smyrna. 
Uh, we will also be, um, those of you that have been around for a long time, approximately 17 years ago, we added on to Oakland and Riverdale's annex to give them that side swing. At that time, their kitchens were remodeled to serve over 2,000 students. Smyrna's kitchen has never been touched since the original design. So part of this program is to expand their kitchen, get it on par with Oakland, Riverdale, Stewart's Creek, those type things. Um, that's the basic um, programs for all three schools. Um, it's about, uh, it's a little over 100,000 square feet of new construction uh, at all three locations. Uh, Oakland and Riverdale, somewhere around 45 to 50,000 square feet of renovation. Smyrna's renovation is a little less invasive. Also with Oakland and Riverdale, those schools, uh, there were things that were done in the 70s um, that uh, are no longer, uh, we need to fix. Uh, as an example, Middle Tennessee Electric's main service for these campuses feeds from the front of the building. It actually goes basically underneath their main lobby and it goes across the courtyard to the main electrical gear, which is in the gym. That is direct burial cable. Uh, Middle Tennessee Electric no longer, and they haven't for a, a number of years, does not allow their private utilities to be underneath a, a structure. Um, they are working with us to rectify this. Um, we have met with the city of Murfreesboro uh, on both Riverdale and Oakland's projects. They have requested uh, as part of their review process an emergency access road that is to be constructed on both campuses. We will be relocating water and sewer. They, will all, they have also requested for uh, additional parking. They've also requested for sidewalks on the front of the campuses. We have worked with the city of Murfreesboro. Um, River, uh, Oakland's we're gonna adjust somewhat. We kind of had a handshake agreement that we're gonna direct those requests for sidewalks. They're gonna be on the side street that leads to DeJarnet. Uh, it is uh, the principal there noted that they have more student uh, walking traffic going toward that direction and that sidewalks would be better suited there. So there's a large undertaking to bring those type of things forward for Oakland and Riverdale. And that's kind of a brief uh, synopsis of both projects. Trey. Uh, first we'll go to Commissioner Wilson and then we'll follow up with Commissioner Phillips. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a couple of questions, Trey, follow up on some things you said. So. Um, Obviously, I've had some conversations in the past 24 hours, as some other members may have as well, after what happened yesterday. So I just want to ask a few questions. I know one of the main reasons for discussion, this came up a year ago with the commission. I want to speak to the portable classrooms. In a conversation with Commissioner Blair, I was asked to refer to them as trailers versus portable classrooms, because trailers is what they are. And I believe at Smyrna we have 20 trailers, is that right? We have 20 classrooms. It's about 13 trailers. Okay. So one of the things I know we're all discussing is, and this is my question for you, will these designs bring all the students indoors? Because I heard you mention that it would, we would be getting rid of all the portable classrooms, but would this bring all of the students currently there indoors where everyone's inside? That is correct because that's a big reason for consideration moving forward. There's not a person on this commission that wants a child outside. Uh, it's just the expense of building schools and expanding to be able to get them inside. But this, these three projects would take those three schools and keep everyone inside. So that's one of the questions I wanna ask. How many of the portable classroom trailers do we have total in the county right now? We currently have 153 and we have 10 on order. I mean, it's a tremendous number that we have to consider you know there's not only just the educational factor now we have to consider a safety factor 
you know, children outside, teachers outside. I know we had conversations at all three of the schools with principals. You know, things that become difficult are things like bathroom breaks. When we were at, we're not even talking about Stewart's Creek Elementary at this point, but when we were at that school, just talking about whenever a child needs to go to the restroom, you've got an adult that would have to escort them back into the building. There are so many reasons we've, we must continue discussing how we eventually are able to get our kids indoors and get rid of trailers and everyone is quiet on this committee I guarantee it because we've never been asked and I'm not sure anyone in the county has ever been asked to approve an amendment for hundred and fifty six million dollars this may be the biggest ask in the history of the county I'm assuming so it's a little bit stunning for us all I know just watching these committee meetings a year ago you know the price at one point for all five additions was even less than this. So just building cost, labor, building materials, inflation, everything's brought this up to an unbelievable, stunning and shocking amount of money that in Michael Smith, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions if I could, please. If we're just talking about funding, we threw around numbers. I believe it was the last commission meeting last month. We have so many meetings, I forget which one it was. But I think you mentioned possibly to the full commission that just as an example, if you look at what the school board's asking for, and I'm only talking about the 156 million, we're not even discussing the elementary school west that we're looking at another 60 million plus for. Uh, we're just discussing in this motion 156, but if we take the full ask, plus we've been looking at a transfer station because we have an issue uh, with solid waste. You mentioned just as a roundabout number, a $200 million bond would be somewhere around 14 to 16 million dollars added to debt service. Is that right? Can, can you speak a little bit to, because one question the public and everyone has, I know I've been asked recently is, for the cost of the schools, what's my property tax gonna go up? That's just cutting straight to everybody's question. There's no one that doesn't want it, but everybody wants to know what's gonna cost them. So can you speak a little bit to that just around that $200 million mark, just because it's kind of the same previous conversation you'd already kind of started with us. <clears throat> now keep in mind, whatever number I give you is gonna be a range. Um, I will tell you interest rates are moving daily, especially after, I believe it was last week or the week before last, the Fed raised their target interest rate, which obviously affects bond markets. Um, so we have yet to see some of the repercussions to see what that's gonna look like for us. Now, with all that being said is, I did give a number of somewhere um, between 15 and 17 million per year added to the debt service fund, uh, if we were to borrow 200 million. Now, I would also like to, to keep in mind that that debt service fund is also at a $10 million budgeted deficit as of today. Um, so, you know, you're looking at roughly at some point you will have to make up that $10 million deficit, um, but $200 million will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 17 million per year. Um, but now I do wanna throw a caveat if, if interest rates were to go again, depending on when we go to the bond market, if they were to go up, that number could go up. If they were to go down, that number could also go down. That's why, that's why that range is so big. Um, so please don't hold me to those exact numbers. I mean, it could be 14 or it could be 18, depending on what interest rates do. Does, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. That it, you know, at least brings to mind exactly what we're looking like. I know the public doesn't understand debt services. Let's talk about what that would cost. Let's just say just debt services at that money, just the, just our capital projects fund debt service, just dealing with schools. We're talking about how many pennies and what would that look like on just a general percentage of a property tax increase? This is what everyone wants to know. So we might as well talk about it. I'm doing math on the fly real quick. And I appreciate you doing that. It's just, I think we have conversations with numbers that the public doesn't know we have, and they have to know that how strongly we consider both. No commissioner wants a child outside. No commissioner wants to have the quality of education be less than stellar in this county. We all want more SROs. There's lots of things we want, but we do not have the revenue. Rutherford County does not have a spending problem. We have a revenue problem. And so we're looking at how do we pay for this? We know what we want. How do we pay for it? So thank you for doing that math. And did that give you enough time to do those calculations? Give me, give me one second. 
While he's calculating. Okay, so when you look at the Smyrna edition, is that bringing all the students inside as well? Yes, ma'am. Because I don't see where it's connected to the other building. Is this going to be just a separate building? No, ma'am, it's tied to it. It has two connector hallways. Uh, it's tied on the second floor. The first level is not. So the students would have to go upstairs to go over to the other building? Which is the they first wouldn't... floor of the main building. The main building at Smyrna is only one story. Uh huh. And that end of the building drops, drops off down. significantly. So we're using the lower, we're using the difference in elevation to gain another floor. Okay. And there, there's not an exit, or, well, I guess there are exits on that first floor as well, but they would have to go upstairs to go to the other building. Is that what you're saying? Depending upon what floor they're on. Gotcha. And I think you said um, 100, about 100,000 square feet is, is between all three schools combined. Is that, is that correct? 100,000 square feet each. Each, okay. Per project, yes. Gotcha. Sir. I just want to get a quick, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. So rough math, again, I just, these numbers will fluctuate depending on what the penny brings. We have not calculated what the penny brings um, for next year yet. We will not get that firm calculation until sometime um, April or May or even June, depending on um, how property assessed or property values fluctuate and what comes on, what comes off. All of those things come into play here. So we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about some ranges here. So if you're talking about, and I'm gonna use the a middle amount. So if you're talking about the 200 million or so dollar amounts, that's gonna be roughly 16 million or so per year to the debt service fund. Again, that's plus or minus a few million then we would have to take into account the $10 million deficit, or I would highly recommend we do, that we currently have. So that gives you a $26 million deficit. Now, to make up that, the penny last year brought in 1.4 million, uh, roughly $1.4 million. Um, that was the budget for the penny last year. So you're looking at somewhere between 16 and 18 pennies, depending on what the penny grows to. So to be conservative, 18 pennies added to the tax rate would be an 11.18% increase to property taxes. Our current tax rate, let me also give you that for some clarification. What was the percentage? Roughly, we could use roughly 11 for the debt. Um, now keep in mind, that could go up or down depending on what the penny brings. There's other revenue in our debt service fund. Property tax is the major. Um, the other major revenue in our debt, debt service fund is our adequate facilities tax. If the economy was to slow, um, like it has shown a little bit of slowing, that revenue could go down. It could go up if, if the Fed stops, pauses on interest rates and you know construction goes back up. Our current tax rate is $1. 1.6162, so adding about 18 cents to that brings you to about $1.80, $1.79, which is about 11%. I hope that answered the question. Well, it does, because we've got to start having these discussions, because, and here's, I know one of the biggest conundrums we have right now is this is just the beginning of us looking at something we're adding to our budget. We're not going to have the budget request from the various departments of the county uh, chairman. Would that be sometime in the first week of May would be the first look or late April that we even start seeing those. So with May coming out the earliest, the issue is us having the motion before us tonight, the amount of footwork that has to be done just to look at this because obviously for you to even start putting numbers together this needs to go to the budget committee next they would have to start having similar conversations and then michael has to start really looking at the reality of what this would look like to borrow this money and then we are not yet informed of the requests from any of the other uh, uh, parts of the county for another month so this is where we sit and so my, my rationale of thinking, and I'm looking to some of the, the you know, chairman and uh, uh, Commissioner Gooch for some guidance here, I feel like we should consider moving it forward for only the reason of discovery to discuss where it's gonna come out with the money because we're gonna have to, people are gonna want to know, if there's a public discussion for people to get involved, they're gonna wanna know what this percentage looks like. I mean, hearing tonight from, from Director Smith, 11% based on a $200 million 
estimate bond. That's at least a number people start calculating on what they paid in their last year's property taxes to start going, here's what we're looking at with schools. So I'm trying to address this as a county taxpayer. This affects everyone here too. We're not exempt from paying that. So I'm trying to do the math for myself. So at a $200 million bond, however that would be used, we're looking at approximately with these pennies, looking at about 11%. And that would, in your fuzzy math, I realize it was fuzzy, uh, that actually calculated taking in account the $10 million deficit we currently have in our debt services. Is that correct? That is correct. And that's something I, I, I know you've been advising and you're exactly right because I know there's also a ceiling threshold of the kind of bond debt we can take versus what our revenue is. Without increasing revenue, we can only borrow so much money, and as a county, we become financially in default. Is that right? Correct. So that's what your county commissioners and myself, what we're trying to balance is we're looking at a five-year plan that's over $750 million just for capital projects on schools. Nothing else is being discussed and the revenue would have to increase or we wouldn't be able to today even borrow the requested amount of money without being in default. So this is the conundrum. I'm speaking for myself, but I just wanted to share those thoughts with everybody because these are the kind of discussions that we have with the finance director uh, on funding these things. So again, my idea would be it would be best to move forward to budget for nothing else than to get it started, to get these numbers more together this is not a, a yes or no on a final budget. That goes through budget, it goes through commission, there's lots of votes upcoming, but I feel like this is something the commission wants to do, we should look at it, and then we need to decide once we get in other budgets what we can do. What can we fund? What does that look like with a property tax levy increasing and have that discussion with our constituents and with each other? And any other thoughts, I'd love to hear them. I don't really have any more to share other than that, and I hope that helped a little bit. Commissioner Oliver. Mr. Chairman, um, I think moving this forward would seem like we're in agreement with this, when I'm not necessarily in agreement with this amount. Um, the school, my question is, the school board has other funding options, so what can you all contribute to this $156 million? Because I know the school board gets funding from other areas. Does all of this have to come from the county? This money does come from the county. The funding that the school board gets from the county and from the state covers their operating budget. Okay, so that's what I'm, I guess I'm asking. Yes, What's y'all's balance? What can y'all contribute to this? Or what has the budget been previously? I'm new on this board, okay? Yes, ma'am. And I know you've had budgets years before, so where is the money and what can be contributed to this? Because for you to all of a sudden come up with 156 million, and as my colleague stated, it's gonna require more revenue. And I'm just trying to figure out where's the money gonna come from. So the Board of Education's money, and I don't wanna to get too deep into the weeds. Basically this year, 191 million was maintenance of effort, which comes from the county. The balance comes from the state and federal dollars. And that balance is our budget. That's our operating budget for the year. There is a slight ending fund balance, and I'm getting in Brian's and Mike's shoes now, but there's an ending fund balance that's ba basically a savings account that's required by the state. There's a minimum for it, and then there's kind of a, a unwritten maximum. We're in that range, so our rainy day fund is kind of where it needs to be, and there is no between the state and the federal and what the county gives us, that is our yearly operating budget. Anything over and above the operating budget, like for this type of request, is funded by the county. I'm, I'm gonna add one thing. So there is one new thing that's coming and, and we can't really budget for it now and I'll explain. So part of the new funding formula is there is a potential pot of money um, for capital projects coming with TISA, but that could potentially be spent on something like this. Um, however, that money is not guaranteed, it is dependent on certain growth amount and it is divided across the entire state. So that would be the one new pot that changes with the new TISA formula. Um, currently we're under BEP and they do not 
give money through BP. They give growth money in BP, but that is to fund the operation of the new students that would, would have grown throughout that year. Um, and then we, we do have to keep certain required minimum fund balances in the general purpose school fund. Um, so that money could not be used for this. And then there are other funds over there. I'm just running through. Uh, they have a federal projects fund. So that money is, is all federal money. It's all restricted. We could not use it for this. They have a cafeteria fund, Fund 143. That money is also restricted for cafeteria operations. And then we have a 177, which is educational capital projects. Now that money is on the tax roll. However, that money right now by the previous commissions has been earmarked for ongoing capital and capital projects like a new roof or a new HVAC trying to keep up with uh, chiller going out, those types of things. So that, that kind of, that's your options is what I'm getting at. Now, Commissioner Oliver, just to kind of speak to your question as well, uh, we've heard Charlie Baum was sitting right there and said that his estimated amount, which we don't know this for sure, Brian, I realize that, but he said he estimated this to be 53 to 57 million, somewhere in the range of what TISA funds will provide. But here's the thing. I'm sitting here looking at a copy of the budget that was put, uh, passed last year, and the general purpose school fund was appropriated $28 million over estimated revenues. Now, I realize that that's not going to probably come in uh, uh, quite that bad because we had unfilled positions. But if you look at the money coming from TISA, there's a big deficit here that has to be also addressed, just like the $10 million deficit in the general debt service has to be addressed. So we're looking at one going, trying to get back to squared from where we were a year ago. Um, that's, we have to get back there. Now we're talking about spending even more money. So I just want to be sure I answered that question because I know you were asking where are we. We're starting out in the hole on that. So $53 million extra money when you're going to probably have a, a budget that's asking for more money and you're also starting off in the hole of over $20 million. It's not leaving a whole big dent to put towards skin in the game towards the county funding $156 million. That's just the truth. We want to, but that's the truth that we're at. We all know it. But that was a good question. That's where we're at, and we're just trying to get squared back up. And Dr. Sullivan mentioned the other night, you and I watched the school board where he discussed this, that <clears throat> we anticipate them holding a flat budget as another, quote, contribution, not seeking any more. They're relying on TISA to pay the deficit and any growth they have, which I think that's a... Uh, a good call. That's a skin in the game. That's a, a good faith effort on their part that he commented the other night that they're not going to be seeking us to contribute a greater amount above the 190 from last year. Of course, this is a huge amount. It's 190 plus, plus 17 million. Uh, but their contribution is not seeking growth funds from us. And Michael? I need to follow up on two things. I need to follow up on a question you asked. I need to follow up on something. Um, so the number, I want to clarify something. The number I gave you earlier for pennies and, and, and all of those numbers were based on around 200 million. Now, I, I need to clarify something here. Um, that 200 million is just a round number that, that you asked me to count on. Now, one of the things that, that this body, and really we're gonna, we would discuss at budget, but we need to consider that does not include um, a forensic center potentially, that does not include a transfer station. And I just want to be realistic with the numbers I'm giving you so that y'all don't all get mad at me in, in a month. Um, so realistically, I think the school system has, has communicated that they need an elementary school at some point next year. So even if that request is not tonight, we need to consider, we would have to consider revenue options for that if, if they were to come because you can't change the tax rate in the middle of the year. So just keep that in mind. I think the 200 number is probably a little low if this body would wish to do an elementary school and a potential transfer station or a forensic center. And then I need to tack on something to Commissioner Oliver's question. You ask about the options for skin in the game and Chairman Dodd did mention something and, and if their request is only to keep the current maintenance of effort dollar amount, that would allow um, this body to look at moving pennies around um, once we get to the budget process. So the numbers I gave you are new pennies. They do not include moving any pennies around, um, any current pennies moving around. So that would be an option for this body or for the full commission, um, but that would be an additional option. 
one other question. I don't know if this is my last question, but is there anything in this that can be cut? Any of these designs, any of this? Have you all considered? Because I know you all knew you were coming with a big number. So in, in their discussions, have, did y'all look at any kind of way you can curb this number down? These projects are the needs requested by the school board. Nothing extra. The, the request is to get the students out of the portables into the classrooms, and that's what these three projects do. Oh, yeah, I understand that, but does it have to be at a $156 million rate? I'm just asking. When you look at the designs and different things that are being requested or as far as these plans are concerned, are there any, any ways that the budget can be curbed? Or, or it sounds like to me they haven't considered curbing the budget at all. Uh, yes, ma'am, we have. And what I'm saying is the school board's charged to the engineering and the architects provide spaces that bring the capacity of the schools to 2,500. No more. That's what this does. It brings the capacity to 2,500. No more. Now, the renovation that we're doing is to minimize the additional new square footage that would have been required. So we're utilizing some of our existing space, repurposing it to meet those same requirements because renovation is cheaper than adding on. So at this point, unless you want to cut program space and leave children in portables, the answer would be it's at the bare bones ask of what the school board asked us to do. Let me jump, just let me jump in, then we'll come back, just because I'm on that specific topic. Having said that, did you, did your board task you or your engineers to value engineer the plans? Or are you still working from the first set of plans that came out? Or have you honed them to be good stewards of the tax dollar? We have designed these buildings around the same parameters that we've designed all of our other schools with, the same like kind materials, the same type structures. There is no frills or uh, I call it fluff. Uh, in these projects. Um, could we value engineer uh, our flooring material from LVT to VCT? It will save on your upfront cost, but our long-term cost for maintenance, uh, OJI trips and falls when the wax is stripped and cleaned every year would be, ex ex would be higher. So could we cut some money out of it by using lesser quality products? Yes. Would it be 10 to $15 million? No, ma'am. You're probably looking two to three, maybe $4 million. Nothing of substance that's going to cut 10 to $15 million out of the projects. The, the, the projects are where, size-wise, they're where they should be. But we could cut quality of material, but what that does is going to cost money in capital projects later, or it's going to cost us money in labor and maintenance to maintain the facilities. We're trying to get away from VCT floors, which is the white square tile that's in probably 85% of our schools. The problem with it is it has to be stripped and waxed every year. The products that we're putting in our school systems now, we started at uh, Rock Springs Elementary. We're using a product called LVT. It's a no wax, no strip, damp mop, go forward. It's going to save the county and the taxpayers money in the future. And we feel like we're going to get the same longevity out of it. Um, so to lessen that material, we're going to be going back to something we're trying to get away from, from a long term value. We still do block and brick. Uh, one of the most economical ways to build is bar joist and metal deck. There's no fancy columns. There's no, uh, there are two auditoriums, one at Oakland, one at Riverdale. Um, but if you remove those from the project, then you no longer have a connector from the main building to the annex. There's portions of that that become integral to uh, what the goals of the school board and, and, and was and that's number one get the students in the building and number two tie the buildings together where the students would have safe passage in inclement weather or in the event of an issue they would be inside a building 
pretty much all day. Does that mean that children are still not gonna duck outside and take a shortcut across the grass? No, ma'am, but the intent of what the school board has asked us to do is what we've done. So, and I guess you've been around the board left. If they had to choose, okay, between these and a new elementary school, which one is more important or more or I, needed more? I don't, I don't feel like I'm qualified position wise. I think that would need to be a Dr. Sullivan question and I think he would probably want to ask the board for their, um, what their vote would be. I, I, I don't want to speak for the board. I might have a question here that might actually kind of speak to that because right now they haven't even closed on the property yet to build an elementary school so there's a timing issue so l let me bring this up this is bringing about another conversation I'm glad you said that Trey because we know a rezoning is going to come up it's been talked about we're waiting for a study to come back it's something that's going to have to talk about it would take place not next school year but the next that's another thing about these th these three additions. They there has to be they're going to be in this rezoning plan of how many kids go to all these schools, and the elementary school not even ready to start. If you had the it, we don't obviously we're not even discussing that at this moment, but they don't even have a place to put it yet, so we're not even at that point. But if we were, th the time of completion that we could even move students in. Every time we're waiting to fund and start construction projects, we're delaying when children can start even be putting in they're going in these schools so if you had this funded if we, this happened by the end of this budget cycle so we get to the end of june and it's doing this and it's all good when would these projects are these two-year projects at least or do you think you know like because i'm trying to figure out how it falls inside a rezoning issue because at some point with so many kids in the north end i'm concerned on if you don't expand smyrna especially when at some point is a smyrna kid going to end up going to school 15 miles away because we just we're completely out of space and you can't put 30 portables out there so i'm trying to consider how it works in the rezone as well um, the elementary school same way we need that now but we don't even have a place that we've that we're going to put it since they want it to be i believe on the west side so what was your question? My question to you, and I'm trying to completion, make sure I your completion for time. When you start, when, when are we putting you in jeopardy of it not opening before the beginning of a school year? What is our? What are we looking at date wise? That's just another piece for very it. close now. Very close to the cutoff date. Where if they don't, if they didn't have funding and know they could start, that it wouldn't be open in two years. Here, here's our, uh, and that would be the school year of what 2025. 2025, 26? Yes, August yeah. of 25, yes, sir. So that's why I'm asking we're, him we're is, close is to that. Switch, if we waited too long. The, the switch gear now, uh, and I know I'm getting in the weeds, the electrical main gear for these new additions is 80 weeks out. And that's if we order this week. And I'm, they won't give us you a firm date until you place an order. I, I don't know what it looks like in another month or six weeks. But, I mean, that's where we sit. But I, I, that's a, the contractors are beginning to get nervous that our lead times on our materials are going to get away from us. But right now it's 80 weeks. And I'm not, you asked a question, I'm providing information. Did, did, was that, did that segue into Commissioner Oliver's question, if, if we had a choice, which would we choose? Or did she, because, because Ms. Oliver specified the elementary school. Yeah, that because some of it, even if, even if the, the school board, I feel, would have to go back, obviously, and have that discussion because the order of this, we would be asking them to make an order change. You've got four asks here. Would you consider the elementary above? It's like, but I'm not sure how that would fall if they changed it, if it wouldn't be able to open by 2025 and you know, anything after that. Because they normally, when they rezone, as far as I know, they don't put anyone in unless it's at the beginning of a year. They make no in school year changes to rezoning. So if it wasn't in time to open 2025, it'd be 2026. Well, building it early doesn't make any sense to me. You know, with the additions, it's going to immediately have kids using it. The elementary school, if it doesn't hit at the right time, you know, it's not going to be built anyway. So I'm just saying I know a lot of timing factors will also go into that consideration because we would have to, if we decided that, we'd have to delay this 
send it. This is what happened last year. I think they had, or at some point, maybe even more than a year ago, I think they brought all five editions and they got stopped and sent back to the school board. Then they came back with these three and then the other two. And we're kind of, and of course, circumstances have changed, but we'd ask, we'd be asking to do again, take this and where are we on that again? And just each time it does, by the time it gets back to board and committee, months go by. And that's why I'm asking you the question. How many months can we have go by that we redebate what we can do and what the order is before we miss a budget cycle and then all of a sudden we have a real issue? Is it appropriate to make a request to move it to budget simply to have these continuing conversations? That that's not an approval of funding, it's a, we need to, this is a request, it's been on the books, we've been talking about it for a year that we want to do it. The cost has gone way up, way different than what the information the commission had last year, way more. However, I would rather see it move forward and us continue this conversation as we see other budget items have everything out on the table and say, hey, here's, here's what this will cost to do this. If we do this and that, it's gonna cost this and just kind of get that discussion started. But if that's not appropriate, to push that forward to keep the conversation going and we have to decide here if we're just gonna stop, that's a real big decision. That's why I'm asking. Are you confident that we will have another whack at this? Well, Commissioner Oliver, can she be confident that, that if we vote yes, if we have a motion and, and it's passed, will we have a legitimate opportunity to ask the question Commissioner just asked and didn't get an answer? If you have a priority, what would it be? Right now, we don't have any other priority because no, there's been no motion for an, a, a elementary school or anything else. So, and I'm even, so that question was somewhat rhetorical, but are you confident we'll have a chance? We need to hear from the members of this committee what everybody thinks about it. Where, where are you on the discussion? I mean, my, my whole concern is everything I've talked about on, on I would like to see it continue, the discussion continue just so we know what we're dealing with. At the with. budget level. Yes, yeah. at the budget level, because we're not making a final decision. We look at it later and say, we can't do that. This is just to move it forward so we can begin looking at it. The commission wants this. We've talked about it a year ago. I'd like to keep talking about it. We can always make a final decision on what, what, what we can afford and what the final costs are later. Uh, I have, thank you. So, Commissioner Boyd, uh, Commissioner Phillips, you were given a you were going to be next 30 minutes ago. Do you want to hold up? Commissioner Boyd, go ahead. I just, how long have we been talking about this? We've been talking about this for almost two years. Uh, and and how, how much has the cost gone up in those two years? They've doubled? Well, well no. No, the, not quite. I, the budget I gave you all in the fall, this, these three projects is $20 million over that budget. It was 135 and we're at uh, round numbers and we're at 155. I don't think we can afford to, to talk about this anymore. I think we need to move forward with it. And I make a motion to approve this and move forward. Is there a second? I'm gonna second it to continue discussion. I'd like to hear what Chairman Phillips has to say about it. We can always vote no. In, in the, and, and there, uh, if there is a mo if there is a second, I will ask for discussion on the motion. I will second it. We have a, a appropriate motion and an appropriate second. Is there any discussion on the motion to push this forward to budget or budget to assist in educating us on how we can afford this? Mr. Chair, I think that um, what we was kind of getting at was to, if I'm reading you right, is to send it to budget with a neutral recommendation for, for, for continued conversation and study. And I was ready to go with that. And then the motion come out, I, I believe, was to approve it with a positive recommendation and send it on. And so I guess I prefer the, what we talked about, which, which, uh, what he was talking about with the neutral recommendation to cont continue the conversation. So 
what I'm um, in that regard, it's my opinion that if you feel that way, you, it would require a motion, uh, an amendment, to amend the previous motion to say with a neutral recommendation. And that may or may not get a second. Or he can withdraw. It, it's, if, if, if that clarity made any sense to you, Commissioner Boyd? I, I, I think we need to move forward with it. Uh, I'm not withdrawing. But we have a motion to move forward with a positive recommendation to budget and seconded to forward a yes vote on 56,305,000, excuse me, 157 million, 156, 156,305,20. And Commissioner Boyd, it, it was your intent for a positive recommendation. Is that that's the intent of the motion? Yes, and I, I think if we keep push, pushing this off and pushing it off, if the cost is going to continue to go up and up. Uh, if the last commission would have approved this and we would have moved forward with those additions, where would we be standing now? We, we would be paying half of what we, we're going to have to pay. Yeah, Am I correct? A few million dollars Trey? less in debt service. You, you're correct. Um, that, that, so that's, that's my, my stance. I mean, I, I think the, the longer we put it off, the worse off we're going to get. Thank you. Commissioner McMurray. Yeah, so just a, just a brief comment on my point of view. I know we, we all want fiscal responsibility and uh, we fully support investing in our education, but for me, I, I want to continue the discussions because we're all going to have to answer to our constituents. And I believe by voting yes for this, it's it's telling the committees that we're yes to funding in it, funding in it. And um, as the county mayor says, you know, we're, we're bleeding right now, so we need to have a balance on what we need to do. So. I don't know what we should do, how we can move forward. Any other discussion? I am going to call for the vote. If it fails, we will continue to discuss. Mr. Chen, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to hear. Did you say you were, your last comment, I just didn't hear it. For the discussion, I'll, I'm in support of what you were for, instead of just sending it along or on approval, that's just me as um, Commissioner Gooch had mentioned. I do want to point something out. Let me ask for some clarity in this, because I agree everyone is going to want more clarity before just saying yes. So let me ask a question. What's the difference if we're moving it forward with a neutral request to budget to work it out? Isn't, we're doing the same timeline though, correct? If you say yes or neutral, we're to move it to budget, budget's gonna start having continued dialogue either way without us giving a positive, because I understand I'm listening to commissioners tonight that have further questions about what it's gonna cost, having discussions with constituents. My, con my issue is I don't want to stop this from moving forward in discussion because our time is very limited on how, many, how much we can have discussion on it. I do want it to be neutral. I agree with that because I want to have more information if it'd be positive and say, we're, we, no matter what, we want to make this work, we do want to do that. But I do want more numbers and more information. We've discussed some things tonight that are pretty heavy for a lot of people. So um, my second to move forward is to move forward, not to say yes. My, so I don't know what I need to do with my second. I don't want to say yes. I want to, say, I, want to, I want to move it forward to budget, but I want to move it forward in that neutral stance to say, let's continue crunching the numbers and find out what it's going to really cost us and look at it with the additional budget items coming. We want to do it, but how can I possibly full on, no one can say yes, and we wouldn't have to. We'll have a final vote at the end, but you can't say that without seeing the final number. I have, I have two, two organic thoughts on that. Number one, the possibility is that the current motion would fail and the floor would be open for another motion that might be more clarifying and might win the vote. Or an amendment would be made now to the first motion to be voted on. One of those two are, pop, are possible outcomes of the 
appropriate motion and second that are before us. Just my thought. Can I move to amend it to move forward to budget with a neutral position? I don't know if the second can, can frankly, in a, in a, in a, we would have to vote to do that, and, and, but I don't know if a second can amend the original. I, I'm Robert's rule of order, I just don't know that. Does anybody else know? He can't amend if the original motion he, 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 he doesn't want to amend his motion. But that's. But anyone else can can vote to can make a motion to amend the original, and then the after after you take it through a vote. Correct. After the you amendment can be voted first. The amendment will be voted first. The original motion would be voted first. The amendment we would vote on the amendment. If the amendment were a request to amend the original, we would vote on the amendment first. Or, am I correct? And then we would vote on the. Mr. The amended original. Mr. Chair, I think that the amendment would do, out of fairness to Commissioner Boyd, the amendment is opposite of his motion. Correct. So I would, I would suggest that we go ahead and take the vote, yeah. and then if it, if it does fail, then I think Commissioner Wilson may be ready to make another motion. Does anyone call for the question? Call for the question. Rachel, call the vote, please. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Commissioner McMurray? No. Commissioner Gooch? No. Commissioner Oliver? No. Commissioner Davidson? No. Commissioner Wilson? No. Chairman Dodd. No. Motion fails. Uh, the floor is open for discussion on the original school board's request. I would like to move that we move this forward to budget with a neutral position for further discussion on how this would affect not only our property tax levy, but just the overall costs to continue the discussion with budget. Second. Any further discussion? Discussion on this motion? Um, Chairman Phillips. Just one thing to point out. This has been, we've been working on this for uh, almost two years, probably not quite two years, but the original proposal, if I remember right, Trey, was 75 million bucks for the three schools. So we're double that right now. And that's been almost about a year or so. Um, let me also point out simple math, and it's not correct, and it's not to the millionth of a dollar, but if we're looking at borrowing 150 million bucks over a 20 year period of time, the payout for that is somewhere in the neighborhood of 325 to 350 million bucks is the true cost of this to the taxpayers of the county over a 20 year period of time. So it'd be in that neighborhood. So the real cost over 20 years is double what the 300, the 150 million bucks is. I, I'm, I'm an advocate of, of adding on to these three schools, but the original motion made last spring was to support the proposal, send them out for bid. And when the bid came back, it's when they were double. So I'm not sure we could have moved any quicker on this than we have. Uh, so uh, the original thought was 75 million bucks for the three schools. When the bids came back, they were a lot more uh, than that. So I'm not sure we could have moved any quicker, Commissioner Dodd. Maybe we could have, but I'm just not sure that we could have. I think the, the, the thought right now is um, uh, if we vote in favor of this, it goes before budget, I believe, on the 6th. And if budget were to approve it, it goes before the full county commission the following week on the 13th. If it passes the county commission, we as a commission have committed to a property tax increase in the neighborhood of 15, 16 cents because we have to go to bond market. That's what we're voting on. 
and, and if that's the, the wish of the commission, I'm okay with that. But that's what happens. It goes from here to budget, and then budget to, to before the full commission, and if the full commission passes it, we've already committed to a property tax increase uh, for the next year. Once again, I, I'm not totally opposed to that, simply because we've got two schools, Oakland and Riverdale, that are over 50 years old and need updating. And Smyrna's not that far behind. I think Smyrna's 40 years old in that neighborhood. So it needs some updated. And then behind that comes Laverne, and Laverne is kind of in the same shape, and, and we're going to need to do something there. So what we do going forward uh, is going to not only be up to the budget committee to make a recommendation to the full commission, but we'll get another shot at this uh, through budget and through the uh, full commission. And in all probability, what could happen is that the budget committee will go back to the school board and say, give us an alternative, okay? What if we only want to do one this year and one the next year, one the following year? What if we want to spread this out over five years instead of doing them this? So we've got uh, options and we've got opportunities to take another shot or two at it. And the full commission will have that as well. So moving it forward uh, with the discussion at budget is probably not a bad idea uh, because we, as commissioners will get at least two more shots at it. Uh, and that could be what happened. Uh, it could be that, hey, give us plan B and let us discuss that. Uh, and that might delay it another month or two. But if, if that's what happened, it's, it's in the best interest of the commission, so be it. So moving it forward is really not a bad idea as we begin to look at how this fits in to the entire budget as we're looking uh, this spring. And, and, and that is part of my d internal deliberation is, I know we're gonna get two more swipes at this. These seven people will get more swipes and those swipes will have the initial information and facts and opinions of our fellow commissioners on budget and then the full county commission, including public safety and other committees will also have a full swipe of which we seven will have a dialogue at that meeting as well. So that's part of my deliberation. Uh, um, Mr. Mr. Chair, Gooch. Um, Trey, if, the, if this was approved by budget and the commission, uh, when would construction start? That's a conversation. <laughs> if it's approved on the 13th, we would be starting construction within 45 days to meet the current schedule. If we don't make the 13th, there's a very real possibility that these projects are going back out for bid. And so if the construction starts within 45 days, the completion? Would be by August of, this is 23, so 24, August of 25. We're shooting for Christmas, but what we're being told now is we can't get the materials in time. That 80 weeks does not get me Christmas of 24. So it's so, gonna be August of 25. With that in mind, so the construction, construction will start this year, but completion in a, in, in a future year. So my question would be, um, Director Smith, would the full 156 million be required in one year or could it be funded over two years my, my recommendation that the funding be there for the hundred for the full 156 million based on when we would receive pay apps based on based on several factors um, I would recommend that, that funding be there um, that would be my my recommendation within within the next uh, 12 to 14 months or 15 months. That would be my recommendation that the funding be there next year. Yes. So, <clears throat> so you're saying that in this physical year, we would need to to start the you know go to the bond market. That that's correct for the whole 156. That's correct. But. When would when would draws be? 
You're talking about draws for this project? Yes. I mean, usually they're once a month, um, but I mean, that depends on which project. Usually Biscuit and both RG Anderson, I believe, are the two bidders on here. In my experience, they send a, um, a pay app once a month. I think that, Trey, has that been historically for y'all here? Yes. So your recommendation would be to go ahead and get the funding 100% this year, but it could be drawn out over it could, yes, but keep in mind, if you drew this out, you're going to pay, I call it closing costs, but it's, it's technically not that, but, you know, we have quite a few administrative fees every time we go to the bond market. Um, it's one of the reasons we try to only go once a year. I mean, we could go multiple times, but once we pay our bond counsel, once we pay our um, broker fees, all of those things, I mean, we would be, we would be paying those double, yes. Okay. Question. Um, when do you plan on bringing us the elementary school numbers do you is it next month two months three months or i'm sorry i didn't hear the question when do you all plan on um, bringing in the elementary numbers do you have anything to to present because i know you're trying to build a new in elementary truth, school yes sir we have a budget request but we have not been approved to de begin architectural design yet okay so it would still be subject to the budget at this time is around 60 million but we could hear that. That will probably need to go in this 23-24 budget. So, I mean, or 22-23. So, we may hear that, and that may affect, ultimately, our opportunity. We, if we, we look at this at full commission, and I guess we'll hear this before we're the next Health and Ed Committee. So, that may come up after this vote at full commission. Michael. I need to add one thing to uh, Commissioner Gooch's question. Um, you were you were kind of asking, do we have to borrow all, all during this year? And by this year, I mean two things I want to clarify. One, we've already spent a little over $3 million on these high schools of cash flow. We've provided that up front. And currently our 189 fund only has a little over $16 million in cash flow, and we're currently spending that down on current projects. Not, that will not be spent all the way down to to zero, obviously, because we have some projects that are depending on various stages. So I think one of the reasons that's my recommendation is one from a cash, cash flow uh, perspective. The other thing is when you talk about this year, even if it gets approved on the 13th, we won't turn around and borrow, we won't turn around and go to the market that very next day, um, because it's my understanding this body or the commission body as a whole may wish to tackle on a county project to that. And so it may not be that we don't go till June. We may not go till July. We may go in May, depending on what the full body would recommend that we do. And depending on interest rates, we do try to uh, time that, you know. So um, I just kind of wanted to clarify that. We have a proper motion and second, and we've had discussion. Rachel, call the roll. It's seconded by Mr. Gooch. <laughs> seconded by Mr. Gooch. I did have a question. I was waiting to ask a question, and I just kind of got lost in the weeds. Yeah, come on with it. Um, so just to follow up on what Chairman Phillips said, this would move it to budget. Budget could kind of look at how we can pay for this or whatever the case may be, and then they could send it on to the full commission, and again, we can look at it and see if we can pay for this and then go from there, right? Okay. Because just to, as my colleague said, we want what's best for our students. We want, we do want our students inside. Um, unfortunately, the babies yesterday were inside, you know, um, but we, we need to do it most cost effectively so that we don't put such a burden on our constituents. So that's what's in the forefront of my mind. And just like my colleague said, we got to pay these taxes too, so. That, that's just what we have to consider. Rachel, call the roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Commissioner Davidson? No. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Commissioner McMurray? Yes. 
Chairman Dodd. Yes. Motion passes. That concludes your contributions, correct? Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, when does budget meet? I'll defer to Michael. April the 6th, next Thursday. I believe that's next Thursday, April 6th. And I believe that's at 5.30. I will move on to, is there any other business or any new business? Commissioner Davidson. Yes, um, I've had Excuse some. me, Trey and Brian, could y'all stay for another moment, please? Sorry. So I had some parents um, tag me on social media, reached out, talked to a few of them, and I just wanted to get some updates at some point, um, hopefully before the next meeting or at the next meeting, that we had had some uh, vandalism of restrooms at Laverne High School and so some of the students the parents said were yes in trouble because they were taking too long because they were having to go to the other side of the school um, due to these TikTok challenge I think is what it was they were ripping sinks and urinals and things off the wall and I just didn't know if that had been on your radar yet and I mean it's, it's a whole Facebook post with lots of parents upset about it and I just didn't know if you knew about that and all right so there there and it's not just at Laverne um, I was not aware of a TikTok challenge because I don't do social media but that's neither here nor there uh, I was at the school um, last week to, for another reason, uh, and there were some bathrooms that were closed, and the staff, uh, I asked the question, is there a problem? Is there something that I can do, because I am also over maintenance as well, is, is there an issue for the restrooms being closed? They're partially closed due to student behavior uh, and vandalism. Uh, that behavior has led to damage to the uh, newly remodeled restrooms. Uh, so the administration has chosen to close certain ones to minimize the damage and attempt to better manage the students. That's not uh, a me thing. The, the administration makes that decision. I did want to make sure that the, from a maintenance standpoint, if there was anything they needed, that we were there and we had been there because some of the things that they're doing clogs up the commodes. And the custodial staff can only has certain equipment, so when they cannot make repair, they send in a work order and our team goes. But this is not an isolated incident. It has happened at a couple of our other high schools, and the administration at those schools has taken appropriate action to what they feel is appropriate. So does that answer your question? So to your knowledge, you've not received any work orders for these um, restrooms at Laverne High School? We, we, have re, re, we have received some, but the repairs have been made. I just wanted some information to give back to the parents. Yes, the who the were repairs upset. have been made. Okay. And, and it's, it's fairly significant cost-wise. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Uh, Chairman. My other question about the light utility pole at Smyrna. Smyrna High School, one of the football field lights fell during the storm. It did damage two cars in the apartment complex. Our staff was on site Saturday morning to clean up and re remove the, the pole. Uh, we talked with Susan Thompson with risk management and the county insurance. We sent her, we talked to her on Saturday uh, we took all the appropriate photographs so that we could move things to open the parking lot back up. We sent those photographs to insurance uh, first thing yesterday morning. 
uh, and insurance will be dealing, taking care of those folks that um, had damage to their cars. That would be their point of contact. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, ladies called our office today and we gave her uh, the information to contact the county's insurance company. And that's what takes place. Now, on my side, I'm in the process of these poles have been on our radar for a number of years. They've been on the capital projects list for a number of years. Um, I'm looking at uh, cost uh, to replace the poles and the lights just at that school at this time. It's included in our capital projects, but it's in the overall budget to go to LED lighting throughout the whole county. Uh, it has never been pulled out as a separate incident, um, but we will look at that as a separate entity now to get a budget. And those are the same ones that are at Laverne High School Stadium as well? Yes, ma'am. And we're looking at those as well? Yes, ma'am. Well, they haven't failed yet. I mean, do we have to wait for them to fail? Um, no, I can get a price. Commissioner Just one quick follow-up while you're here, Mr. Lee. Um, and to go back to the previous discussion, if this, this recommendation that goes before budget and then potentially goes before the full commission, um, if, if it fails uh, and we want to revisit this thing at some point in the future, all of the bids will have to be redone, yes, correct? The, and the, there's a potential, like Mr. Commissioner Boyd said, that that price could even go up that much more, correct? It is a, a very real possibility, yes. So the timeline, if, if budget doesn't pass it or if the full commission doesn't pass it and wants you to come back with a different recommendation as far as the number of schools or that type of thing, uh, we'll have to rebid. Yes, sir. But if the budget and the full commission says we'll do one of the schools, we could move probably move forward with that one school or if we want to do two schools, we could move forward that under the current bid situation. Yes, sir. Anything that's moved forward by April 13th will fall under the current bid system. Anything that does not will have to be rebid. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Trey. I have two other items under new business. That Thanks, Brian. Um, number one, I've been informed that the school board at their next meeting is going to have a resolution prepared by Jeff Reed and presented to the school board to forward to our state legislators to support our language to change the private act that we are meeting on Thursday the 30th. So the school board just wanted to share that they're gonna support our decision to compel the state legislature to help in our revenue problem. And another item, um, Commissioner Oliver and others have in the face of this tragedy we've had has, are seeking an update on school security. So the school board has offered a closed session, an executive session to discuss school safety with this committee on April the 5th at the Board of Education. That's their, that's the first pitch. I know that two commissioners, I'm, I'm interpreting Commissioner Romeo has a conflict that night. I know Commissioner Davidson does. So we can ask for another night, but their first response to our, our question was the fifth. If not the fifth, then let's propose another date or just ask them to come back with us another date. And this is a closed session to discuss school security on the fifth. And there, the board uh, chairman Sharp offered five or 530. I don't know if that meant one or the other or just in that window. Do y'all want to go with, uh, I'm going to ask a chairman of public safety comment too, but I, I think Trey had something. Well, okay, so 
Is this going to be a called meeting? I, I, I don't know. We, we, we attended a board meeting and they had this on their agenda a year ago. And it had to go, so I think it's a board meeting they're inviting us. I can clarify that. Well, do, do that, and I guess my next question is, in executive session, that's when the client and lawyers can discuss things, but he's not our lawyer. The, it, it, I may be using the wrong term, but the last time the school board presented to us their security plans, they requested it be in a closed session with their attorney present and their security director present. That's there? And we were there to listen in, to ask questions, so they... When, when was that? I don't remember. When did we, do y'all remember? It was, a, it was late fall, late fall, early, late fall. early winter, yeah. I know that one, two, three, four, I know five of us were there. And uh, I think uh, we picked uh, it up so it on their, we picked it up on their minutes that they were having a closed session on security and they allowed us in. I don't think yeah, it was Commissioner Gooch, yeah, they, it was their their session and they just said, we are welcome to come if we wanted to. It wasn't as this was where it was like an invitation beforehand. It was a, if you guys want to attend, you can hear the information at the same time we are. It was fairly informal, but that's how that invitation was. Okay, nothing. So I guess, I guess I was just wondering if, if it was how legal it was, but you're saying this happened before, so it would be legal yeah the first time it was fully vetted to, to, to be appropriate uh, chairman Pettis Reed has requested to speak to this committee while Pettis is coming forward I, I think we've been invited to attend that meeting that executive session so it wouldn't be a called meeting on our part we're just invited to attend if we wanted to. Commissioners, I just, commissioners, I just wanted to mention it to it, and those of you last evening were at our public safety uh, committee meeting. I, yesterday afternoon, I talked with our sheriff, and I thought it was a good idea to bring it forward to the public uh, safety committee to let them know uh, I've always made it a policy for the uh, schools within my district where I have four of them that I have become very familiar with the principals there and I drop in check in with them every so often to see what's going on that way but what he and I have agreed to is that any commissioner who would like to go to the schools within their district and to go with the officer who is responsible for our SROs within those schools. To meet them there and to also meet with the SRO in each of these schools, to meet with them and take a tour of that school to see what our security policy is in those schools, you're welcome to do so. But you'll have to contact the sheriff when you want to do that so that we can set that up. But this just gives you an opportunity to do that and where you'll be familiar with it and what's going on. It's somewhat also somewhat like the, the school board too, that where we also ask that you keep this somewhat, uh, this is just not a public thing, this is just something like that, but it's something where you as a commissioner know what is happening in your school, where you can reassure those within your community that we are trying our best to do that. Last evening we also had uh, one of the chiefs with us who is responsible for looking after our officers. We have just last week had a safety, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what you call it, but they went through a whole process in all the schools within the county going through a uh, trial run of what has to be done. All the schools went through this practice. So we are doing this continually in all the schools uh, and what we do here in Rutherford County. So we're aware of what's happening, what we're doing the best that we can, and I think we've got a, 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 good, a good program. They also, whenever the schools are closed, they have a full uh, training session within the schools where they practice with a, uh, having a a uh, active shooter within there where they bring the officers in, where they go through the whole process. So this is being done, with, done within our county schools, but I thought you as commissioners need to know this, where if you wanna go and see what's happening in your schools, you can do so. And I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. 
and also occasionally the um, nonprofit that I'm assistant chief of, we have in the past been asked to come to those such trainings when schools are closed. And if we um, have that opportunity in the future, and um, we do, I will obviously extend an invitation for you to come out and see for yourself how these trainings are done. Yeah. Um, after consulting with some folks up here, I think that, and Commissioner Oliver, like you and I, quote, requested this. Um, if it's a special call meeting, it gets complicated in advertising. Do we get paid? Do we not get paid? Might I, might I suggest that we ask the school board to place on their agenda on, on any given month or, or week a session that we can volunteer to go to? Is that... With that, I'm comfortable with that. If you guys are comfortable with that, we'll just ask, I'll ask their chairman to just put it on the agenda, let us know what night it is, and those of us who wish to go can go. And I'm okay with that. It's not about being paid or not paid. It's just constituent questions. Oh, I agree. So completely. I definitely would like to be more knowledgeable. I'm going to ask the chair. Let's go ahead. I was going to say, if so, um, can a simple email be sent out as a or text message to the group when that meeting is? Yeah. Um, just for instance, um, Trey or Mr. Uh, Commissioner Boyd um, were not at the last meeting that we had, so we want to make sure everybody's in included in when we're going to have that next yes. meeting. Yes, yes, I think we could do that. And, and I'll take it upon myself to ask their chairman to place that topic on a, a soon and imminent agenda and invite us. We think that'll clear up legally and the other way. Commissioner Phillips, any comment on that? Just one follow up to what Commissioner Reed was saying. The shooting that happened yesterday, from what I've heard, and you probably heard the same thing, that the shooter decided upon that Covenant School as a second choice. The first choice was a school that was protected by a resource officer. Uh, so that extra amount of security helped the school that was originally targeted. Uh, so some of the things that we're doing, I think, uh, to that process, uh, that doesn't mean that we can't do more. Also talking with our sheriff, they take a, a, a situation like this and see how they can apply what they've learned through that and update our security system. So we're as active as we know how to be. Um, but it, it appears that shooter yesterday chose a school that probably wasn't as secure as some of the other schools in, in and around Davidson County and most all of our schools in Rutherford County. So just having those resource officers there is a deterrent. Doesn't mean that it won't happen, but it is a deterrent and it, it, it goes to show that that program is successful and the expense that we go through with those is worth every nickel that we spend on it. Thank you. If there's no other business, I'll entertain a I'll entertain Michael Smith. Chairman Phillips, did you have something tonight? Did you want to talk about that tonight or you want to put it off? I, I'd really like for you to talk about it. Uh, and, and you, I'll, I'll make an attempt and then you can uh, uh, jump in and, and tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, our property assessor, Rob Mitchell, made an application uh, for critical thinking program uh, uh, for youths at risk uh, and was awarded through a, two different contributions, $5,300 that can be used for uh, our youth in Rutherford County at risk. The original thought was to use it through the juvenile detention center. It appears that the juvenile detention center probably can't utilize those funds uh, as much simply because the youth are in and out so quick at, at that facility. 
Um, but we accepted those funds last night. Um, at public safety, it should have been accepted here because we'll probably utilize those funds through the uh, school system, through the school board. As an example, Daniel McKee School, perfect target for juveniles or kids that are at risk uh, to participate in this program. It's critical thinking using chest as uh, the opportunity for those use more uh, familiar with thinking things through. Uh, so we'll be having some conversation with the school board uh, and hopefully being able to utilize the school board to utilize those funds and helping kids at risk to uh, uh, develop, develop more of a critical thinking attitude and making better decisions in the future. How'd I do? Great. Thank you. So one of the things we wanted to follow the committee process um, to make sure we didn't skip a committee. So if it's okay with this committee, we will work or my office will work with the schools and then uh, come back with a recommendation potentially at this committee um, for an appropriation of those funds, uh, then to forward them to budget potentially next month. But we didn't want to circumvent the committee process. And this happened, uh, like Chairman Phillips said, last night uh, towards the end of the meeting. So. We just wanted to continue, continue that process and, and if there's any input or direction that this committee wanted to give. Uh, committee so. process is absolutely critical. Uh, the reason it was at public safety because the original thought was to go through juvenile detention. And when we decided, when we heard that it might not be best to go through juvenile detention, we didn't want to turn the money down so we went ahead and accepted it last night. And that amount was 5,300, correct? Thank you. Any other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn.